Um, every so often, we, we call an audible when just, I don't know, feels like God wants us to. So that's why we're going to be in Psalm 61 today. Um, kind of a confluence of events that have kind of, I mean, hit me this week that have been not the, have been hard. Um, and not, not really me, but also to just really our, our, our larger family. Um, my, I asked my dad's permission for this, and he said it was okay. So um, my dad was uh, diagnosed this week with prostate cancer. Um, it is, uh, it, it's localized, so um, that's, you know, that's good. We're going to have it removed. Uh, doctor is pretty confident about prognosis, so we're, we're, you know, I don't know. When you feel, when you hear that that thing on in the room, it's just it's, it's not an easy thing, right? I mean, and, and it's not even me. It's you know my dad's walking through that. So our family is would would appreciate your prayers. Um, you know, uh, so we we would love that. Um, on top of that, you know, I feel like there's just ever, some knowing our church hearing the, the stuff that's going on in people's hearts and lives. Um, I thought this might be, I don't know, I was praying in the back room, and I told Daryl, hey, I think we're going to have to switch the scripture. And, uh, and he's awesome, and he did. So we're going to be in Psalm 61. We're going to read it through, and then I'm just going to talk it through with some points in a minute. But, but here's, here it is. So... When, why is this doing this? I hate technology. Then I love it. Verse 1 says this. Hear my cry. Oh God, listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you. When my heart is faint... Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge. A strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge under the shelter of your wings. Selah. For you, have God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Prolong the life of the king. May his years endure to all generations. May, may he be enthroned forever before God. Appoint steadfast love and faithfulness to watch over him. So will I ever sing praises to your name as I perform my vows day after day. This, this is a, a psalm that's written by David. Um, what's happened to him that's kind of precipitated this psalm is uh, his, his, his son is taking the throne away from him. There's a betrayal that's happening. And, uh, and, and this betrayal that's happening is causing um, him to run. And so he's in the wilderness when he's writing. And he's in uh, 
pain. His own son betrays him, runs, tries to take the kingdom and turns those who are closest to him against him. And so David's writing this in a place of personal, inner turmoil and strife. This is a psalm I've turned to uh, you know, for, for a long time. Um, I memorized it when I was a teenager. And, uh, you know, when you're a teenager, you have these, these little turmoils, right? The, 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 the girl dumped me. Oh. Um, I, didn't get, I didn't make the basketball team. And, and, and these little tiny things, you know. And, and you get older, uh, and you have, you, uh, those are real for a teenager, all right? I don't want to, like, negate that stuff. But you start to, like, deal with, like, real, big, painful stuff. You know, you, you, you're dealing with, with, financial losses and family losses and, and, and job losses and all of it. And, uh, and this, this psalm has been like a, like, a, like a salve to my soul from the time I was 17 until, until this week uh, again. Maybe let me just say this for Scripture. That, that it, uh, the, in, we'll say, the interpretation never changes, but you find the new application of it in your soul as you walk this road. And what I love that the Lindley said and that, that you all know is that as you, as you walk through this life, you're going to, there aren't always the happy endings. Am I right? Like the, the, it, there's not always the happy ending. And that's what I love about this psalm that David writes. Because he's not at the happy ending. He's in the middle of, of the hurt. And so, so let's just walk through it together. He says, he says, hear my cry. Like, that, that word hear, um, like you, you read it like I just read it, and it just sounds like a, like a hear. But what he's doing is like, it's like a shout. The, the way it's just originally written in Hebrew, and the way that word is in Hebrew is it's like, it's hear my cry. It, it's a shout. It's a, I feel alone, and I, I am begging you to hear me now. And, and, and the word cry, like, it, it's not, you know, it might be tearful, but what, what it is, it's like, a, my heart is angry. I'm, I'm murmuring. I'm complaining. I am angry at where I'm at. And I'm demanding you, God, please hear me. You can choose not to, I guess, but I'm begging you to hear me now. Just the, the pain that he's dealing with and the hurt that he's dealing with emotionally inside of his soul, he's, he's screaming out, God, hear, hear, hear me. I think at some point in your life as a believer, you've been there. Where you, 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 don't, you don't have an answer. And the one that you've kind of been trained to, to go to, who, who, he's going to give me my answer. That's what, you know, that's what the guy on TV said. Like, I'm just going to get my blessing, and then it's going to be good. And then all of it's going to go away. But what about when it's not? 
and you're dealing with, with long-term suffering. And you've got enough faith. Oh, I believe. I'm going to be, I believe in God. But it's still... not going away. Does that, does that say that, that, that God isn't there or the words of what Lindley sang in that song, that, that he's walking us through it, that we would learn to trust him more? I don't know. Let's go on a little bit further. It, it says, hear my cry, and then, oh God, and he says, listen to my prayer. He's, 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 uh, He's still kind of yelling. The, the, the way it's constructed, if you, if you like grammar, it's an imperative. It's a command. But, but he's going from the, the emotion of listen to I'm talking to you now, Lord. Will you please hear me? Here. Here's my emotional cry, the guttural fr- from the diaphragm, ah, the groan. And now he's going to start kind of wording a prayer. Oh, oh, listen to my prayer. Dave, David's in the desert by himself. He was king of a, 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 a country. That God gave him, and now he's alone. And uh, he's he's begging that God God would hear him. Verse two from from the end of the earth. Have you ever have you ever sat there? where you feel like you're at the end of the earth. Where, where it doesn't... You feel so far away from everything. From everybody. From God. From friends. From family. You feel isolated. And, and the thing is, it feels like nobody knows... And nobody cares. That, that you feel broken. That's David when he's, when he's saying this. From the end of the earth, I call to you. I, I'm, I feel so distant from everybody and from everything, and nobody, nobody even cares. Nobody, 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 nobody cares. I'm sitting here in a chair by myself and nobody wants, nobody's asking me how I'm doing. Be surrounded by a thousand people, but you feel like you're at the end of of the earth. David probably more literally is feeling like he's at the end of the earth middle of a really desolate place. And he just kind of repeats the same language again. From the end of the earth, I, I call to you. See, he, he, he feels alone, and he feels by himself. And in that space where he feels alone and by himself, I'm calling. I'm calling again. I said, hear me. I said, listen to me. And now I'm saying, call, I'm calling you. God. When my heart is faint. When, when, when that heart, when you're done you ever been emotionally drained? Physi- and that emotional draining just also drains you physically. 
right? And you have, and, but, but then your mind is racing so much that you can't sleep. Have you been there? Maybe just me, but, 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 but you're, you're exhausted emotionally. That's making you physically tired. And then beyond that, all I can think about is the anxieties that are present here, present here, and I'm totally overwhelmed with what I'm going to do. And it hits it at these different points in life when, 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 you, you get married, or, or after you're married, and, or, or, and, and the guy was not exactly what you planned him to be. And then you have, you have kids, and then those kids, they cry all the stinking time. And they're joys, and you're supposed to say that they're joys. But sometimes, um, they're drains. You wouldn't trade them for anything. you sure would like an hour of uninterrupted sleep. Got a, got a lot of newborns back there. I knew that one was going to get you. <laughs> my heart is faint. And, and it's not, it's like my heart is tired of beating. It's exhausted it doesn't want to keep beating, but it keeps beating. It, it's the, I've run so hard, and I've pushed so hard, and I'm drained emotionally and physically, and, and, and I, I'm just done. I, I don't know if you've ever sat there before, but I've, I've sat there... Um, sat there the, the, this week. I definitely snapped a few times more than I normally do. Um, and my heart is faint. I'm looking at that next, next, you know, little, little verse there, and I'm trying to Am I there yet emotionally right now? And lead me to the rock that is higher than I. I'm tired. Emotionally, physically drained. I know that you sit in the same place, many of you right now, and it's like I oh, I'm overwhelmed. And David, who's in the same place, starts talking to God and starts asking for something. The, word, the words lead me, it's like this, I can't get to the rock on my own. That word lead is also another word for guide. And, and, and he, he's just, he's saying, I don't know where the rock is. I don't know how to get higher than this situation. I don't know how to get higher than this moment that I'm having to deal with. I don't know how to get above it. I, don't, I, don't, I have no idea. Because I'm stuck down here. My heart's faint. I'm at the end of the earth. I feel far away from everything. I feel like nobody cares. I am down here. I need, I, need, I need you to pull me up. I need, I need you to lead me. Because I'm not, I can't do it. I don't have the strength inside my soul. I don't have the mental acuity. I, I'm done, God. If you don't do this, I don't know what else to do. Guide me. Lead me. Another translation that, that's not often used for this, this word is, is, is pull me. Pull me. 
David's just begging that he'd pull him up. Pull me to the rock that's higher than I. I, I, I got to get a view above it because I, 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 I don't know it. I don't understand it. I don't know why you're making me go through it, God. I don't know why I have to deal with it, God. This isn't fair. Other families don't have to do this. Why do I have to do this? I have to be in the middle of this. Why do I have to be in the middle of this? This isn't fair. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Look at verse 3. Um, what David starts to do is he starts to remember. He starts to remember times past where, where he's been in this situation before or something similar. I don't know if you know the story of David. You, you know he killed Goliath, right? He was anointed king and became king. Um, but in that space in between his anointing and his becoming... There was a man called Saul who was jealous. He was the king of Israel, and David was anointed the king to happen one day. And uh, Saul, Saul knew it. And uh, Saul chased him. And David found himself in the middle of the wilderness before. And, and he'd seen, um, he'd seen this before. He says, you, you've, you've been my res- refuge. He starts to remember. He starts to remember back in times before where, he, where he's been on the run and God has been there. He's been a place where he could run to before. That, that, that when he's running, when he's in need, there's a place he can be at. There's a person who's there. You've been my refuge. You've been my you've been my strong tower. You've been the place that when I was betrayed, I could run into you. You, You've been been this, this, this thing that when I'm broken and hurting, following your will, by the way, I can run there. I mean, sometimes we'll feel like if if I'm doing what God wants me to do, then I'm never going to face any pain. There's two words at the end of that phrase there that That, that will say differently. Strong tower against the enemy. Oh, what David has in mind probably is just the guy who's coming after him. But as you look theologically, and as you look New Testament, we see the enemy as the one who's plotting against us the one who, who hates us. This enemy has chased me, has pushed me away. And you're a strong tower there. You're, you, you're a place that I can run to. The enemy's coming after me. The enemy's, the enemy's hurting me. The enemy wants to destroy me. But you're God. 
You're a strong tower, God. I know that to be true. And, and, and I, I, I need to go there. I need to, to, to be there. This enemy's after me. This enemy's against me. This enemy destroy and mess with me. But you're the place. And my heart, my heart's faint, and I don't know if I have the strength to get there. I need you to pull me. I need you to guide me. And I, I, and I need to be there. Because right here I'm in danger, but in you I'm safe. That enemy wants to hurt and destroy. That's what Jesus said. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come to give you life and to give it more abundantly. That there's going to be no hurt and no pain and everything's going to be good? No. No means that in that twist and turn of the thing that's not fair and the pain that you hurt with and, and, the, and, and in the doctor's office or your boss's office and the layoffs are happening, that he's, he's a strong tower. Verse 4. let me dwell in your tent forever. Somehow I kind of wandered out of it. I want to be back in it. Somehow I kind of got caught up in what, what's going on here. And I need to get back here. Sometimes I feel like you get pulled out. and I, I just want to be there. I'm safer here. I'm better here. Let me take refuge under the shelter of your wings. Let me, let me be there. I don't know where you're at or what's going on, or you might think you're crazy today. I don't understand. I thought we were going to talk about worship. We'll do that next week. There's a thing about this place and being together and being encouraged one with another and seeing that other people hurt too. That breaks down some walls. The the thing I tell people I'm counseling all the time is that the biggest lie the devil ever tells us is that we're the only one going through it. The biggest lie the devil ever tells us is that we're the only one going through it. And if you're the only one going through it, then you're, you close off. I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to be engaged. I'm not going to share because no one's going to understand. And if I bring it to the light, they're just going to judge me and they're going to think that there's... that that that, that that I'm, I'm crazy. But, but the beauty of the, the video, the Lindley show, or, or, or when there's just a, this heart, y'all, I'm, I don't know what to do. Is, is that's the place where you get a chance to speak in, come around, and care for fellow, fellow believers. 1 Corinthians 1 says that we're supposed to comfort each other with the comfort we found in Christ. And if we don't know that someone needs to be comforted, we can't comfort them, right? This is one of the ways that the Lord shelters us under his wings. 
We've got the Spirit, but then we've got a hundred other believers who also have the Spirit to comfort, to come alongside, without necessarily an answer, right? Because I, I, what answer is there? The long-term chronic problem the thing that's never going to get better. What comfort is there? To say, oh, here, here's, the way, here's the way you fix it. No, don't do that. Sometimes the best thing is just, here's my arm around you, and you're not alone. But sometimes that's the biggest and best way that we can be the hands and feet of Jesus to other believers. And so David, David kind of switches. And, 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 he's, and he's done with the, the pain and, and, and the hurt. Not done with it like it's not there anymore, but he's, 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 he's feeling the shelter. He's feeling the, the comfort. He's feeling that God is there with him now. And, and now he's just talking. You, O oh God, have heard my vows You've heard me. You, you, you've heard the things I've promised. You've promised me. You've heard it. You've given me the heritage of those who fear your name. There are people who have gone before me who have gone through it. There are people who, who, who are in my life or part of my life who have dealt with it. You've given me them and they fear you and they trust you. And so sometimes you don't have the faith on your own. But those around you have the faith to kind of grip you, love you, and hug you, and point you back to God. Because when you're, when you're broken, you're saying, hey, I need you. It's helpful to know that there's others who are there with you. And he says this, prolong the life of the king. May his years endure to all generations. David, that sounds so self-serving, right? He's the king. Prolong my life. Let me live for a longer time. He's really looking forward. Because David knows he's not going to live for all generations. He's looking to Jesus. And brother and sister, whatever pain you're dealing with, like... I know some, it pro, might even sound trite. Don't let it sound trite. Look to Jesus. Look to him. See him. Grab a hold of him. Look to him. And when you're hurting, look to him. May he be enthroned forever before God. Appoint steadfast love and faithfulness to watch over him. Verse 8. So will I ever sing praises to your name. As I perform my vows daily sounds like just the end of a verse and okay that sounds like the end but from the beginning of hear me God hear me to I've walked through it I know you're a refuge a tower I can run to you're there I'm going to look to you you've given me people around me that can that, that, that are there that, 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 that have, I've seen them go through this before So I'm in a dark place. Like his positioning physically hasn't changed. He's still in the shadow of it. He's still in the desert. He's still in, in, the, in, in the middle of nowhere. He's still at the end of the earth physically. But in, in the darkness of it, 
and in the shadow of it and in the pain of it, I'm going to fight through it. And the, the shadow that looks like it's cast over me and it's done and I'm done. You're there. You're the tower. You're the refuge. And I'm going to remember that up here. And I'm going to sing praise to you. I'm still in the shadow alone, but I'm going to praise you. I'm still broken and hurt and, and by myself, and I'm going to praise you. And I, and I don't know what else to do, and I don't know where else to go, but you're a strong tower. You're a refuge. I need you to show up. You're here with me. I know you're with me. Even in the middle of this, I know it's true, and so I'm going to praise you. I don't see the end of it yet, but I'm going to praise you. I don't see the, the end of this thing yet. I don't see a cure for it yet or a fix for it yet or, or a happy ending yet. And maybe there never will be a happy ending, but I'm going to praise you. I'm going to walk in it. Because, because while th this life is going to have trouble, in this life, we're going to have trouble. But what does Jesus say? Fear not, for I've overcome this world. So, so yeah, you're going to have trouble here. I'm going to have trouble here. We're all going to have trouble here. Fear not, for I've overcome it. For I'm beyond it, for I'm above it, for I'm greater than it. For, for, for this thing isn't the end. And what Paul says later in 1 Corinthians 4 is that this light, momentary affliction is working for us a far greater weight of glory. Pain, the hurt, the, the trouble that feels heavy now and is heavy now when you're bearing it on your own shoulders is light in comparison to eternity. It's working for us a far greater weight of glory. And so we'll sing praises. We're going to keep after it. This isn't a fake it till you make it, okay? This isn't a, all right, I'm, I'm, just going to, I'm just going to do my thing and do it robotically. No, David's done anything but be robotic throughout this whole thing, right? He's not faking it. He's genuine, authentic, and in pain. But I'm going to do the things I said I was going to do. I'm going to trust you with this. I'm going to put this... In you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fall on you. I'm gonna take this heart and I'm gonna trust you with it. I'm gonna perform my vows daily. I'm gonna sing praises to you. I'm gonna perform my vows. I'm gonna do the things. I'm gonna do the right. I'm gonna trust you. I'm gonna trust you. Because no one in this world is worth that. But Jesus is. That, that, that king who's enthroned forever is. That, that God who never leaves us and never forsakes us is. And so we'll sing praise. Pray with me. Father, I love this psalm because it brings comfort to my heart. I pray that it that your inspired words brought comfort to other people's hearts. Not my words, but the words uh, that you inspired David to write. Lord, I pray for broken hearts in our church. Disappointments and pains and suffering. That sometimes even those things feel like you don't really get it, Jason. It's still 
it, it's still brutal in here. It's still very raw. I understand. More than me understanding, the Lord understands. And the words here are saying, lead me, guide me, pull me up. are true for you. That he will lead you, that he will guide you, that he can pull you up. God, thank you for the reminder of, of these words today for my soul and this week. As we've had some... <laughs> difficult conversations back and forth, you and I, Lord. You are a strong tower. You are a refuge. Lord, as we, as we sing, let it be from a from a heart of authenticity and, and trust. I pray for those going through stuff right now, Lord they'd find you as a strong tower, that they would find you as a refuge. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.